Hello everybody, the Lord Roots here, and welcome back to another episode of Flight for Survival. So, today we are going to continue doing our, um, our orbital construction that we will, you know, want to do. However, I thought we do happen to be building a ship that will be able to handle some of these station science things so I thought you know why not let's go ahead and get this retrograde quark thing because we are going to have some of our experiments available and it will give us some money as well a fair amount of money to be sure but we will go ahead and launch the new some of the new modules here, if I can in fact find them. I'm going to start out with this habitation module. It's actually quite important. And we're going to launch it unmanned because that's something we can get away with, of course. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be this new launcher we're using, the Titan 2L, that can get about 80 or so tons to orbit, if I remember correctly. The larger these things get, the harder they are to land, and so that is something to consider. However, um, I think it's worth pointing out that this is pretty much, for the most part, what we want. I mean, it's most of our modules, as it would turn out, are not so uh, heavy. And so we actually do have an excess of Delta V here that we can take advantage of. And it looks like we're stable now. I'm just going to go ahead and launch this. Except that could be a problem because I forgot to retract my landing gear. So unfortunately this is not going to be the best flight. And I'm struggling to maintain control at the moment. This may also be a very shallow approach that we're taking, which is not the best thing that could happen to us. However, the approach we do want to take We'll just get this down to a reasonable inclination here. I mean, the approach we do want to take is going to be fairly a fairly high approach. And the only thing that really is bothersome about this particular guy here is that it does not have much in the way of reaction wheel control. So that can be a bit of a problem. So a bit steep of an entry, to be sure, but I believe we are going to do okay with this. Notwithstanding any accidents. So some of y'all may be wondering, you know, with 
uh, point .9, or point .9D rather, because there was a point .9 that is completely different. Then, oh, then I guess what? Oh, would have been what's about to be released, but point .9D is coming out pretty soon, I'm sure. Those of you who are paying attention to the series may be wondering what is going to happen whenever that gets released, and I've decided I'm going to stay on point two five for now. Because point two five is relatively stable, and I think there are enough new features in point two six or point ninety rather for us to be concerned about, well, maybe not stability, but definitely about other things that we might worry about. Like, um, oh, a good example, of course, would be possibly, um, you know, or VAB, for instance. You can upgrade your buildings. We also have, you know, modded parts that may not work so well. With, um, this new, uh, deal here, this, with the new release. I mean, I'm sure they'll work. I'm sure they're compatible. But we do need to be worried about that nonetheless. As you can see, we still have plenty of Delta V here, so I'm actually going to get up to a fairly high orbit here, maybe 200 something. In fact, might as well go up to 250, I think. That would be good. And we are already fairly... We, we at least have an orbit. It's, it's an unstable one. But it is an orbit nonetheless. And once we get up here to circularization, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to get all of these modules docked to the KISS uh, service module that we put up earlier. And that is largely because it's tedious and I think even speeding up the video to show what was done would be a very it would be an act of patience. Which I do not believe we really need to endure. So let's just get this thing circularized just to prove that it can be. And once we do this, I think we will be absolutely fine. Now again, it's worth pointing out that this thing is a fair bit sluggish. There's unfortunately not much that can be done about that. I think I could probably put in more reaction wheels and that would definitely help. But, um, as it currently stands, we are going to have to, to worry quite a deal about, um, about the sluggishness, just because it's going to make maneuvers much more difficult. So, uh, we are in space now. I'm just going to get this guy circularized. And we should not need much energy, because 
of the way that we've approached this. Whoa, okay, that is a little bit too far. Our inclination is about as good as we can ask for. Uh, let's see what we got. 259 versus... You know what, I'll take that for a temporary orbit. That's not bad. And we will, of course, point to the node and schedule a burn. But yeah, this thing isn't nearly as nimble as it needs to be. And that is a bit of a problem. Although we could possibly donate fuel from an independent craft, and I think that wouldn't be such a bad idea. We do have some other things I want to do as well. And I'm just going to time warp pure, even though we've got 13 minutes until apoapsis. Whoa. Well, that's no good. Let's see if maybe we can get this guy taken care of real quick. Let's get him good and centered. Well, there we go. We have more than enough in the way of Delta V to pull this off. I guess just to prove that this can be done. I will go ahead and let the sky do its thing. Even though it's doing a roll maneuver. Okay, that's good enough. I mean, it's not the best orbit, but I think it's time for me to go ahead and get some of these things together. Although I do want to point out this next module, some of the features on it real quick. We do happen to have a science lab in addition to general crew quarters, and I thought as well that it would be good for us to add on carpal attachment system boxes for stowage. That is definitely not a bad deal. And we're also using some of the life support stuff here. So you can see here I've welded together this carbon extractor with some life support canisters. And we have a water purifier and looks like a waste deal as well. Well, anyway, I'm going to work on getting this thing docked, and we shall see you in what will be a few seconds for you, maybe about an hour and a half for me. So we are briefly back, uh, largely because I exhausted the fuel on the rocket carrying the cyclotron, even though it had more Delta V than this rocket. I was flying um, the KISS a little bit too aggressively. And so we are going to need to do a couple of things to get this guy set up. Largely, I'm just going to get this guy within, I suppose, like a couple of hundred meters or so of the uh, KISS itself. 
and vice versa. And it is loading that model now. We need to definitely consider bringing down our velocity. The only thing is, is that this thing is a wee bit difficult to fly. Largely because of the fact that we can't run the engines full throttle yet. Because our center of mass is not in line with our center of thrust. And so that can be a bit of a problem. That essentially means that we're going to have to gracefully slow down. However, I think it is worth pointing out that despite this bizarre orbit we're in, and we will want to change that, but despite this, I think we're okay. I mean, we still, if you look at our vessel, we still have plenty of Delta V left. And what is going on here? Why have I lost my target? Well, that was briefly quite scary. We don't need to be spot on with this because we're not docking with it directly. We just need our velocity to come down a good deal. And if we can maintain this guy here, then it shouldn't be anything to get the sky back into orbit. Now we will send the TOG because or rather not just the TOG but we will even send the um we will actually send the refueler that we sent up to take care of this. I will probably do that near the end of the episode because we do have a lot to do. However, we should be just fine, I think. And as long as, you know, I'm gonna get us within maybe like a hundred meters or so. I think that's almost a little bit too much or too little. Yeah, we need to go ahead and match relative velocities, I think. Because we do not want to get into, uh, fall into this thing. Okay, that'll be okay for now, I think. Anyway, I will see you after we get the third, or the second cyclotron on. So, we are back, and I am just briefly getting this thing docked here. It's so um, not the easiest thing in the world to do. You can see that orientation is actually going to be very important here, and part of the reason for that is not only do we have these solar panels on the side of these cyclotrons that we will have to deal with, but we also happen to have, you know, these um, Kerbal Attachment System struts that we're going to use because this guy is going to be floppy without them. And so what I've basically done is I've lined myself up to where the solar panels are on the outside and I'm as close to 
it looks like 360 degrees as possible. We should be good for docking at this point. We are not going too fast, nor are we going too slow, although... This does scare me somewhat. That is to say... The... How close we are to that habitation module. So we need to be careful that we do not accidentally knock off solar panels or anything like that. Incidentally, I think it's worth pointing out that... Um, if we did actually knock off one of those dishes, it would have been possible to repair it. Let me turn off SAS. We are now completely taken care of here. And not only do we have this, um, this one guy here, which will be important because, um, and by this one guy I do mean Oh no. I just realized something. I think... Yeah, I got the sky backwards. That's not too much of an issue, of course. We just have to... Turn it around and rotate it. It is kind of annoying, though. Especially since... The, um... Oh, where's that docking port? Let's undock this and try again. So the problem is, largely, that if we control from here, maybe that'll help. The problem is that I had the sky oriented correctly, but I was controlling from the wrong docking port. That's not too hard of a problem to fix, though, I think. As long as we're careful, we can... As long as we're careful, we can take care of this. Let me get out of the way of this guy real quick. And so this means that this guy needs to be pointing 180 degrees. That tug is useful after all. Unfortunately, it's not a matter of undocking and rotating. We've got a lot to worry about. With this, because as I said, orientation does matter or else our solar panels will clip 
the vessel, which I suppose is okay. Oh, but I'd rather not do that. It doesn't look all that fine and all that good. It's so, um, yeah, once we get the sky lined up, if I get the controls right, and for some reason, that, um, that includes me wandering about, I think 180 degrees is where we need to point. And so I will get us as close to that as possible. The way I've been approaching this... There we go. Is I've been... Trying to get this as close to 180 degrees as I can, or 360 or zero, it really depends. Let me turn this guy off here. We just gotta... You see, part of the issue here is that this is backwards. And we're essentially... What we're essentially trying to do here is we are trying to get this guy as close to orientation as possible or as close to the proper orientation we'll have to go slowly here because as it turns out this is not as easy of a thing to do and we are actually targeting the wrong thing but on the flip side we're at zero degrees which is about where we want to be So that more or less means that all we have to do now is get this guy aligned. Unfortunately, that's one of the things about SAS is that sometimes it can be difficult. To, to maintain control with SAS because it's wanting to maintain your present vector and that can be a bit of a problem And there we go, we are docked. So, 
that leaves us with a couple of things to do. We're balanced again. And our solar panels are aligned, which is great. But now we need to actually might help if we target the moon here. And I believe we're actually fairly close. We want to get rid of this inclination. So there we go. We're We're not going to trust... Oh, grand. Yeah, I forgot there's an issue here. Well, we're at the descending node, so we need to point up. It appears to me that, um... The flight computer is broken somehow. That's okay, we will point normal. The more mass we get on this thing, the less the Terminator that's hanging off the edge there is going to cause problems, I reckon, but... That is... Nonetheless, not the easiest thing to do. No, I'm not going to go full throttle, I'm just going to, in fact, I'm just going to go ahead and start my burn right now. And yes, these engines are quite loud, because, oh, there's a lot of them. Let me push up a bit. Unfortunately, this will take a little bit of a while. I think that's good enough. And that does put us in a nice orientation. But yeah, anyway, now we can send people up here. Or at least that is the plan. And also you can see here, we've got our transmitter out. Well, it should be out. I'm going to activate it. The reason for that is that if we have anything around here, that we have local control available, because this guy will act as though it were a, um, a space station, and it'll reduce input lag. Well, I mean, it is a space station, in a sense. But before we take care of that, I think it's now very likely that we will want to recover this guy at least, because the other one we're having we're going to have issues and you know what why don't we just point retrograde that would be the easiest thing for us to do we have plenty of fuel for which to deorbit this thing. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do it. We are close enough, I think. And we will recover some of this 
Oh my. Well, you know, some of this vessel, even though it is technically debris, I'm not entirely sure how that happened. But, nonetheless, we'll go surface retrograde at this point and we will deploy our parachutes. And we are now off to bigger and better things. And, oh, by doing that, we are going to be able to recover these funds and focus on other things like, you know, maybe rescuing. Uh, one of these guys here. Now, given our inclination, we will not land on the KSC, unfortunately. However, we have plenty of Delta V at this point, and it is possible to get rid of energy rather than, you know, just shoot straight into the ocean. And you can see we're crossing into the desert right now. So how close will we get? That's actually a good question. Unfortunately, I do not know. I think we will probably land near the KSC once we... I mean, we're beginning to lose a lot of energy to begin with. And as long as we land on land then I think that'll be okay. Now, unfortunately, however, we will run into a little bit of an issue here. I think, in fact, we are coming over a little bit high. It's hard to tell because, to be honest, we are really high up. So I'm going to reduce our, um, our speed a little bit in the hopes that we won't crash into those mountains. Well, this should help just a little bit. I guess it wasn't as shallow as I wanted it to be. Because we are no longer over land. I don't know what that debris is there. I guess those are the launch clamps. So unfortunately, we will just barely miss KSC for now. We were too high up, it would seem. However, we did save a lot. That is in terms of, you know, money because we're actually really quite close. I think we're going to be within 30 kilometers. Parachutes should be coming out soon. So we still got mock effects. And I think at this point... We 
shouldn't really need to worry too much about which direction we're pointing. I mean, this thing we do know at least can survive the kind of landing that we're interested in. Unfortunately, we are a little bit high up. So I think about maybe five or six meters per second would be good. And we can afford that. We just want to be very careful about this. I think it may help, in fact, if I shut down this engine. There we go. Well, for some strange reason, we can't recover this vessel. That is somewhat disturbing because uh, I think it's because it's technically debris. Or we are technically in motion. Well, the game has crawled down or slowed down to a crawl. And this is getting thoroughly irritating. So, I'm gonna force quit the game and come back, I think. Okay, so we are back, and it turns out that I might have run into that issue because I was dealing with debris. It is rather nasty. I'm a little bit surprised that they would allow that to happen, but maybe that's something they've fixed um, in the next release. Anyhow, let's stop focus on that. Let's focus on fulfilling this contract with Rodvis Kerman, and then meeting up as well with the Kiss. So we have the Cerberus 2 craft. I guess it was a Rodviz we're, we're meeting up with, but we're, what we're going to basically do is we're going to put Jub and Bill on the space station for a little while. Let them be the wardens. And that shouldn't be hard to do. And what we basically... The, to fetch this guy, and all we really have to do here is to... look for an EVA. Limimone is the guy we're looking at. We're in a target home. I'm gonna wait until... We get to about, I don't know, 300 or so. Give us about 30 degrees to work with.
and that will be plenty for us. Now I thought that I'd put a um a CPU on this. I guess I didn't, or maybe I put it somewhere where it wasn't accessible. But that's okay. We will, for now. We'll go ahead and launch this bad boy. And so this is the replacement for the last deal we had. The last uh, Cerberus capsule. And you can see this one is meant for basically allowing the capsule to be recovered. Let's begin pitching over some. I was going to say, by the way, those, um, one thing about those, um, cyclotrons, too, that do make them a little bit difficult to fly, is that, of course, the center of mass is offset on them. And so it's interesting at least to me, just even getting something like that off the ground. Oh, we may be a little bit steep on this orbit. That's something we'll, we'll have to come to expect. I'm actually thinking that that may be oh okay that is not quite what I had in mind there I'm trying to correct the inclination while I'm speaking but you know at any rate this isn't the... this guy's a little bit wobbly, I don't know why it might have to do with the fact that I'm using an interstage fairing there and of course I just can't do struts on it unfortunately So yeah, we now have a really, really shallow approach. Or not shallow, but the other way around. It's real steep. And so the, the one thing about this is that we're going to have to use ourselves a little bit of a trick in order to get to where we want to. I think I'm going to go ahead and begin pitching down some. And we don't want a really high abscess here, because that could be somewhat of a problem. But I think we're good so far.
There we go. That orbit will decay just a little bit. Unfortunately, we are very inclined. But it won't take long for us to, to fix this. We just have to get out here. We've already got most of our Delta V situation taken care of. I think maybe once we get close to 60 or so we will do something about it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and stage now. What are... A time to apoapsis raise just a little bit. And I'm going to do something to just raise that all. There we go. Well, we have a couple of minutes here. And I'm going to get this thing circularized somehow. Now, for some reason, we are showing debris, and that debris is getting in the way of things. But we'll just get this guy up into an orbit here. An orbit of any kind will do, for that matter. But if we point to the node, then we should be good. And we will just recover this at our convenience. In fact, I'll probably just recover it off screen, come to think of it. There we go. Let's just get this guy close to the burn point. Although it appears our abscess has moved just a little bit. Here we just want to fire prograde, I believe. And that will at least get this guy taken care of. We have more than enough Delta V to get back down. What about this manned vessel? Let's switch to it. 
because we are getting pretty close to being out of the atmosphere and I do think it would be wise for us to get something set up now I believe we are unfortunately a bit ahead so we'll need to slow down in fact I don't know, it's not a bad spot. In fact, that's a pretty good one, I think. Well, let's... get this guy. I do have a computer in here, after all. I must have it hidden. So yeah, we basically, we need to get this guy hooked up here. And that's, you'll notice there's going to be a lot of ways we can do that. Now, of course, let's go up here. These are both liquid tanks it would seem. So that's okay for us. We can dump that in. Right now we need to figure out a way to get these guys closer. Because we are very slightly inclined. So it is time for us to point towards the node here and make ourselves an inclination adjustment. There we go. Our inclination adjustment is done. Now it's just a matter of us trying to meet up with um, Lemony. So circularizing will definitely help in that endeavor. If I actually get this thing to drag, that's the trouble. I'm kind of bouncing between these two. I can't really tell what my abscess is. Okay, I'll take that. It'll take a while for us to catch up. But we're in a low orbit, so... Though it may take a while, 
we should catch up relatively quickly. And without expending much in the way of energy. Now we are going to have to correct our heading, so I'm going to stop this a bit early so we have the opportunity to do so. This thing, as it turns out, is actually quite sprightly, which is something I do rather like about it. The only thing that really kind of sucks about it is the thrust-to-weight ratio. The thrust-to-weight ratio is a little bit meager, but we're in space so we can deal with it. Now Rodviz, or not Rodviz, but Elimini or whatever his name is, has only been up there for a little while, so I mean he's not as worse for wear as you might think. We just have to wait just a little bit. We're only 39 kilometers away. Can we get ourselves any closer? I guess if we accidentally delete the node. Eighteen kilometers is good too. At this point, we are a little bit too slow. Although I think we will get in fairly close to this way. I'm just going to see if I can't get in just a little bit closer because that is a little bit too far out for my own comfort. 5.3, maybe just a little bit closer. 4.8, can we do any better than that? 4.6. And we hit our limit, unfortunately. In no small part due to the fact that this glide pad is very sensitive. 4.7, I think we're just going to have to roll with that. That is not maneuver pro grade. Okay. Or maybe it is. So we've got to wait a good a couple of minutes for this to go through, unfortunately, because of our height. We can't really do much about that because it's just the way it is, I suppose.
I mean, I do kind of wish that... I can kind of see why they do time warp this way. But it is a little bit irritating nonetheless. Now this guy here eventually... We will want to target him. It may be easier to target him and give him fuel than send the refueler out. And I will start the video back up whenever we get close by. Okay, we are back. We have committed this burn. And it was a little bit off, but that's okay. I mean, we will sooner or later. We're already pretty close to the, the target already. Let's move forward. And get this guy in as close as we can. I was going to send the refuelatron after this guy, and that may still be an option. Although, you know, actually, I guess there's little reason not to. I mean, we are carrying live crew here. We just need to figure out what the best way to approach this is. And we're getting pretty close to our burn point. Unfortunately, I think at this point we would probably be better off burning straight towards the sky because we are a little bit off. There we go. I think that we are so close now that it won't make much in the way of sense to... I mean, I don't know. We could, in fact, slow down just a little bit. We got these little oscillations in here that we have to take care of, for instance. And why it says this is the closest approach is beyond me, but we are about ready to slow down. There we go. Lemon Kerman, or however he pronounces his name anyhow, shall soon be liberated. Well, 
that will be really important because oh let's see how close are we now maybe maybe we could stand to get a little bit closer I mean, I do think we are pretty spot on. Well, there we go. His rescue is at hand now, and I think I think he's probably happy just to be alive. Let's see if he has any consumables. Why do we have flight computer? And furthermore, where is the sky? That's 78 kilometers. This is the thing that does kind of... Oh, wait, there we are. We'll just get ourselves righted. That should be plenty for now. Now it's just a matter of finding the hatch, wherever it may be, I think. This is it up here. There we go. Uh, he is now part of the crew, and we have recovered some funds because of that. Well, I think our next task is to meet up with Kiss. Which means I will be getting in a higher orbit. As we are actually quite a great deal behind it. So I think maybe the best thing for us to do is to assume, oh, I don't know, maybe like a hundred, um, 150 seems like a good place to start here. Let's see if we can actually get the node to work this time. No, we still gotta take this guy down. But that'll be okay. I mean, it's not really that big of a, a deal to us.
And that will just mean that whenever we do happen to get down. Okay, there we go. Well, first of all, let's get circular. Being circular is important. We're at 160 by 159. I think that is going to be good. So we will just wait until we get to this point. And then hopefully it'll be easy enough from here. Really hard to tell though. But once I commit this burn, I guess we'll just have to see. And so we're about to raise that right now. Now, if I do, I probably will continue this series even when 0.90 comes out, so I think it'll be worth mentioning, I guess, what my plans are, because 0.25 is a dead end at this point, and I think what I'm going to do is I am going to use a mod pack to fill in the rest of the content. I mean, we are getting a lot of science, anyhow. And so my idea... Oh, we're too far apart. My idea, anyhow... There we go. We'll have to wait a bit, unfortunately. I will... not force you to wait through that, but... At any rate, my idea is something akin to using the community. Oh, don't do that. The uh, community pack that I will have to put a link to. Let's see, can we do any better than this? We'll just leave it there for now, I think. Unless maybe we can lower our orbit this way and in fact we can though not by much 5.4 is good enough for me Anyway, I'm not going to make you wait the entire two hours. We will get to entertain that ourselves. So, I will see you here in a bit. Okay, we are back, and we're getting ready to meet up with the kiss. Which is, um, very, very slowly coming on up to us. I think, um, I think we should be pretty, pretty close to getting the stocking done. However, there are some things we're going to have to do in order to make sure that this ends up being a decent, you know, deal. One of them being that 
in reality, we're actually going to have to dock over here somewhere, which I believe we're actually set to do. Let's go ahead and get ourselves ready to dock. This should be fairly easy, considering how much trouble we've, you know, gone through already. I think, um, we're ready to begin coming and through here. This time orientation doesn't matter. At least not to us. And we should be more or less set. We might as well top off these guys here while we're at it. The only thing we really have to worry about at this point is whether or not we are going to collide, at least with those solar panels. I think we're doing pretty good so far, though. I think we'll be able to dock pretty soon. So there are some things that I think we'd like to do. One of them, it turns out, happens to be Oh, we're going to get some of these things out of this cargo bay, and we are going to store them in the ship, because they, on the one hand, they do have mass, but it's negligible compared to the 500 or so tons that this ship is going to have to, is going to end up, you know, massing. I'm just going to slow down here a hair. And I'm going to try my hardest to get the sky lined up. Additionally, I uh, want to get the docking port lined up as well. So there we go. We are just about to make contact. And what's even better is we're on the side where things really will work out for us. So, we're going to leave Limon, or whatever his name is, because I honestly don't know how to pronounce it. It's, I guess, Limon or Lemimini, or something like that. But I'm going to leave him in here. And while we're at it, we'll transfer some resources over to... 
Now, unfortunately, resources are something that we'll have to think about. We did use a fair bit of fuel after all getting up here. But I'm certain that if we keep this guy fueled up, then it'll be fine. Now where is that hatch? Because there is a hatch somewhere and we need to find it so that I can transfer crew. You know it may in fact be helpful since I seem to be having trouble finding it, it may be helpful for me to plug my mouse in so I can zoom in on this dude. The um, main deal here, of course, is that I'm going to want to go over here. Ah, oh, there's the hatch. If I can get this guy to, to transfer. Now, oh, where is that other hatch? Oh, no, 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 don't do that. We may have a slight change in inclination because of that. Let's see. Let's try this again. It would appear that this is not working out like I originally planned. I seem to have to have a little bit of trouble getting the sky transferred. Oh, there we go, you have to right click. Let's try this again. Bill is gonna go over there as well. Actually, well yeah, we'll get Bill out here. We'll get him to EVA because we need to do a number of things here. We actually have on this side a number of struts to to connect. And it might help if we zoom in so we can see them, but basically the idea is we want to keep this guy from wobbling. We'll link that together. So Bill, as it turns out, is very good at welding. He is, after all, the engineer, at least in the new KSP.
I believe he's the engineer anyway. Maybe it's Bob that's the engineer. I can't remember, but I think Bob is a scientist. Now you can probably see why it's so important that we have these clearances so tight. I think this will be very helpful for us. It's um, not the the hardest thing to get these guys linked up, but it'll add stability because this guy is going to want to wobble without that terminator on there. And frankly, we want all of the stability we can get. We will just have to grab this guy. And maybe, or maybe get on this end here. We only have a little bit more to do though. As you can see, we are already pretty well strutted up. We are so strutted up in fact, that I can't imagine how we might do anything more in the way of struts, at least for now. And in fact, I'm not planning on putting struts, more of these struts on here, because when we get the Terminator added, of course that could be a bit, uh, a big when, or a big if rather, but when we have that terminator, it'll help keep the entire thing together. So this thing is done in terms of our strutting. It should be fairly stable now. At least for the time being. Bill has just got a little bit more to do here. He's just got to get into this box and grab the ohm. Grab these pipe end points. That will have negligible mass. He'll open this guy up and he'll store it. And then We've just got this one over here that we'll have to, to grab as well. Now we probably do eventually want to take these guys and give them a full complement. Get the entire six people up here. We'll open that container and take that end point. And now Bill, the engineer, will be done in his task. Well, maybe. We'll just open that container up and store the sky as well. And there we go. Uh, let's get some things in the way of resources taken care of while we're at it. I think as long as we have some of this fuel, 
Ooh, no, 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 don't do that. There we go. We'll just transfer this guy in, lighten that load up considerably. And then I believe we should have more than enough RCS for us to transfer up here. Yeah, we have way, than, way more than we really want or need. So we'll just fill these guys up here before we leave. That way they will be able to service somebody else. I'm actually rather impressed with the amount of RCS we've managed not to use. And we still have some 500 meters per second of delta V. So I think this will be fine. We will just look in here. You can see the windows don't really offer much in the way of things to look at. They can sort of look at the the station if they want to, the, the cyclotrons. But that's okay. I mean, in reality, what we want now is to, for Lemony, or Lemony, again, whatever his name happens to be, because I have no idea how to pronounce it. But he's going to head on back to the surface now and as for the refueling I think it will be good of us to just move out of the sky's way and let things happen. Incidentally, because this pod is so heavy, you may have noticed we actually have a ton of parachutes. And that's by design, of course. Because we want to ensure that whatever it is that we do that, that these guys land safely we'll just close the stocking port for now let's see control and close the shield It'll be time for us to open it back up pretty soon. Because this guy is, of course, going to be reusable. Or at least in the sense that we recover it. And then it... it comes back in, to, it comes back to Earth. to do surface retrograde from this point on. And I think the hope will be that these containers will survive on re-entry. I did not check their temperature, their max temperature, to see if they would. But I believe they will.
the only thing we may lose. We may lose those RCS ports. I don't know if they can handle being heated up in the way they're about to be. Oh, awesome. It just told me Lemony is part of the space crew, the our crew. We will just get rid of these messages here. Well, as we plunge into the atmosphere, I think we will very soon find ourselves landing. And I do have just one more landing I want to make because we have been at it for a while. But I think it's important that we do recover this one capsule. And for that, we will have to go back to KSS. In the interim, I'm going to try to burn off some of this fuel because I think we're going to overshoot. Well this is no good, we've lost our landing legs. I probably should have known better than to do that. And I'm hoping that we are still able to land. I mean, that's we did unfortunately lose that engine. There's no way around it. But it is important to recover this guy here, or else we will take a hit to our reputation. And we... Oh, we do have a very slight amount of RCS fuel. Unfortunately, we are quite far from the Space Center. And Lamimimi is freaking out for good reasons. Because now we are flying. And we have these crazy center of mass issues that will make it difficult for us to Oh, we're holding retrograde, no wonder. Well, this is not so good. I think we'll land okay. But I would be freaking out about right now if I were Lemony. I mean, after all, something that was not supposed to happen, happened. I 
However, if we can if we can get pointed the right direction. Actually, you know, I think we don't have to be worried about being pointed the right direction at this point because we are going slow enough. We may lose that docking shield. But I think we'll be okay. Let's just recover this vessel. And see what we got back. I mean, at least we can also get that rocket back, too. What would we get here? You get a G Force ribbon. That was kind of weird. He didn't. And we still got 95% back. Which means we unfortunately lost the engine and the landing legs, but that's okay. And we now have more reputation. So, uh, just one more thing before we go. Because I do want to, to take care of this. We should have a plant thing in orbit. If we go to one of our stations here, the... which one is it? It's... one of these. I'll see if I can find it. Let's do stations only. Show no debris. Carbon station one is what we're looking for. We will have to be careful with this guy because, as you may recall, when we Um, when we tried to recover this last time, I'm sure the, well, maybe not, we're missing Eureka's, so we'll just have to let that keep on going. For some reason I thought that that would be ready, but let's take a look at our contracts at least. Because we should have one or two more. And... We do, in fact. We have... A stack separator orbiting Kerbin. For one year. That's worth 165 science, so I'm going to take that. we got a lot of things to do, and I may focus on some of that next time. I mean, definitely, we do have this stack decoupler here that we'll have to do. That'll give us a ton of money. Well, it won't really give us that much money, but it... I don't know, actually, it may... This one, however, will not. We'll have to piggyback it onto something. In the interim, we do have Iken Duna that'll be coming up fairly soon. And I'm going to make every effort to, to try to expedite that. 
I uh, don't think I'm going to stop at Duna this time, however, I might at least get our station going before moving on to the newest version of KSP. But, at any rate, I think this will be okay for us, and really, this is... Uh, I see good things out of this. Until then, this has been Thy Lord Root, and I will see you later.